Hey guys, thanks for watching. Today I'm interviewing Addie, a first year PA student at Marquette University. Addie has an Instagram account called The PA Prescription um, with a friend where they compare their two paths to PA school. So today we're talking to Addie and she's talking about why she chose to be a PA and what her journey in PA school has been like so far. So we'll get to the interview. Thanks for watching. I'm Savannah. I'm a dermatology PA and the host of the Pre PA Club. So yeah, let's jump in. Um, all right. Hello, my name is Addie Johansson, and I am a first year PA student at Marquette University in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Cool. So, did you always know that you wanted to be a PA, or where did that kind of come from? So I have had kind of a weird experience, I guess, with health in that I um, originally was thinking um, just like anything in medicine. I didn't know if it was nursing. I didn't know if it was MD. I liked the idea of research for a little bit. And it wasn't until my junior year of high school when my grandpa um, got a really rare form of leukemia called CMML um, that I was introduced to the PA profession. So he had um, three PAs on his team and one physician, and he just absolutely like raved about these PAs. He said they were so outgoing, um, just so nice to him, and I just you know heard about it through my parents and through him. And I was like, that's kind of cool. They sound like a weird hybrid between like a doctor but has less time and all this stuff. And so I kind of investigated it my senior year of high school. And then the fall that I entered after shadowing some and doing a little bit more investigating, the fall that I entered Creighton, I officially, you know, I declared PA. I was like, this is for me. And I guess I pursued it to year. <laughs> this is cool. Cool. Um that's similar to me. I found out about it my kind of senior year of high school and was like, oh, that's cool. Maybe I should do that. And then ended up going down that path a little bit. Um, so I know you mentioned that you felt like Creighton kind of has prepared or did prepare you well for PA school. Um, tell me yeah. kind of once you got there, you were on the PA track thinking that's what you wanted to do. What steps did you take to make that happen? So Creighton is really unique in that they have you know, their medical program. It's kind of like the pearl of the school. Um, and then they have like physical therapy, occupational therapy, a few other things. But up until this year, this is the first year of their PA program, there wasn't really a whole lot of buzz about PA. So I was the, you know, the only one that applied my, out of my grade junior year. And so I kind of felt like I was on this island. Um, but I was prepared well for both school and the application process because um, I think the professors in the smaller class sizes, they really want you to know the material. So I never had like a multiple choice science exam. They were always, you know, seven pages of short answer and drawing and all this stuff. And so when I got the PA school, I was like, wait, we need to take test for mine on the computer and there's only four answers it can be? Like, this is great. So um, they prepared me just in knowing how to study details and how to study processes and things like that. And then, you know, with the application process, I had a lot of help from them as well, um, which was unique because I was the only one. So I felt like it was generally the professors caring about it. And that's kind of why I was able to get so much help. Is Creighton a smaller school? Yeah. So we had about 4,000 undergrad and then another 4,000 of like medical law school and graduate students. Okay. That is different. At UGA, I think that's smaller. one of 30,000. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of my science classes had 300 plus, um, which made it very difficult when it was time to get those Professor letters, whereas you probably of have course. great relationships with professors going to a smaller school. Um, so when it came time to apply, what do you feel like were the strengths of your application? What had you done? So a lot of people I feel like, and I, I applied right out of undergrad, and sometimes that's looked down on a little bit. You know, people say, are you mature enough? Are you ready? Do you really know that you can do it, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know if you faced any of that, but 
what as an undergrad do you feel like you were able to do to make your application competitive and prepare yourself for actually applying? So my sophomore year, um, that spring, I got my CNA license in Minnesota. And the plan was, you know, I'll work as a CNA somewhere, you know, that summer. And then when it's time to go back to Omaha, I'll, you know, just do school. And then I'll look at getting a job maybe again later. And it just was one of those things where I didn't really know how to break into like the patient care thing, you know, as a student. So what I ended up doing was, um, getting a job at the University of Nebraska Medical Center, which is like a huge, um, you know, billion dollar hospital research, everything in Omaha. And they offered me a job, but they're like, you need to start in like two weeks. So I just stayed in Omaha. I didn't have a lot of friends that were there. I was kind of like, all right, if I really want this job, if I want to get these hours now and go now, I got to, I got to move back down to Omaha and be here, you know, alone for a little bit. But, um, what was cool is they offered 12 hour shifts. So I worked, you know, full time that summer doing three or four 12s a week. And then sometimes going home on the weekends back to Minnesota. Um, but I knew I was like, if I'm going to apply early, not early, young, mm-hmm. you know, I got to have more than 500 hours. So by the time the school year swung around, I was still working one 12 hour a week, my junior year of college. So I either worked a Friday, Saturday or Sunday. Wow meaning that if I worked a Friday, I would miss class. And so I had two classes on Fridays that I got approval for from the instructors. And it actually was kind of great because I formed this relationship with them, making sure I was caught up on the material because they knew every Friday I was at UNMC for 12 hours. So um, that was hard in terms of, you know, balancing the social aspect of it. I had to give up a lot socially. Um, in order to do it, but I knew that that was something that stood out on my application because I applied with 1,300 patient care hours, which is, you know, an average number for someone that takes one or two gap years, but I, like, knew that that was a strong number, you know, coming out of school, and I had given up a lot for it, so I was proud of that number, Um, but I know being younger was definitely something that might have been, you know, a drawback. They didn't have any senior grade for me. They didn't have, um, you know, that other year of work, so I knew it was a risk, but I had a good feeling that I was prepared enough to just, you know, go for it. So that's what I did. Yeah, I love that you're talking about the sacrifices that's been actually kind of a hot topic lately is just, you know, it takes a lot of time and money to even apply to PA school. And then if you get in, great, that's a whole nother thing. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. And I kind of did the same thing as going to a CNA class. I wish I had done it earlier, but, um, I went every Saturday for three months, my sophomore year. I drove an hour each way to go to the CNA class. And then oh my I, did, God. I know I did my rotate or our little clinical week during spring break, just so I could get this license to get patient care hours. Um, yeah. looking back, I'm like, dang, I, that was not fun. And but you wanted to do it. And that's right. It was worth it. You know? Yeah, it was, it was so worth it. And that's what, like, Friday night before that Saturday, I knew that, you know, I'm going to have to wake up at 6 a.m. and drive to class. And so I'm not going to be able to do a lot of fun things. So, yeah, that yeah. was something you just had to do. Um, something so, you definitely have to think about, too, like how much of it's worth it. But for me, like, getting in senior year right. my, in September, I was like, I can – I can quit my job. I can go out every weekend. I can have the, and I have the best senior year I could have asked for. It was right. totally low stress. I could take fun biology class, with some more prereq. It was I, the ideal. I don't know how I got so lucky, seriously. Yeah, and that's what, what makes it nice is when it does work out. But I mean, it's fine. People always ask about gap years, and I think it's fine to take a gap year. And if you want to spread things out, that's perfectly fine. But I think it's also fine for you. Of course, to- yeah kind of make different things your priority and go for them and just know that you're going to sacrifice things along the way um, to get there. But going back to kind of your application cycle, how many schools did you apply to and how did you choose those programs? So I applied to nine schools and um, they were a variety of different locations, sizes, um, public, private, just kind of a variety. And I actually just finished up a blog post 
on, you know, how I did decide on my school because it was a little bit more methodical than just picking random programs. But for me, I knew I wanted to stay in the Midwest. So they were all, you know, Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, but they were all, you know, a mixture of really high up their programs, programs that, you know, had a little bit lower standards, um, some programs that I had my eyes put on to the very beginning, some programs I was told I should apply to. So the program I attend now, Marquette, um, was, you know, halfway through my list, not one I really cared about, but it, a PA that I um, went to Creighton for undergrad and then PA at Marquette but was like, you have to apply here. Like, you would love it. You would fit in right away. You have to apply here. And that's why I applied. And I didn't realize how much I loved it until I went and interviewed. But um, kind of things like that, just kind of listening to other people, connecting with other PAs that have gone there. Um, that's kind of how I guess I came up with my list of nine. But, yeah. Okay, cool. So you applied to nine. What were the outcomes that you got from that cycle? So I um, was offered three total interviews before my like waitlist interviews, I guess. So I didn't realize you could be waitlisted for an interview. That was new That's to a me. New thing. But um, I I kind of had a weird um, situation with Marquette in that I was offered for an interview in early September. I flew to Marquette and interviewed the last week of September, and then was told I got in two days later. So. It was a really fast process, really crazy. Didn't expect to hear back that fast. And so the two other interviews I had scheduled for a few weeks later, I was like, okay, do I really actually care about these schools? Do I want to interview? Um, do I want to travel to interview at these places? And um, Marquette was interesting in that they requested a partial deposit in October and a full deposit in December. So I was like, all right, do I really want to go here? Did I love it? And I was like, yes. Like the fact that, we mutually felt excited about each other. Like that sounds like we're in a relationship, but mutually feel excited about you know attending there. I was like, I'm done, sold. So I ended up canceling those other two interviews, um, and then my interview at Madison wasn't scheduled until January, and I already, already accepted my seat at Marquette. So it was kind of like we both chose each other. It wasn't really a big decision to be made, but I kind of think of it as fate because I don't think I could be anywhere else. That's awesome. Yeah. It usually works out that way. Um, Which is crazy. (laughs) True. What was the most difficult part of the application cycle or the application process for you? Um, For me, it was just that because I was the only one applying, I didn't really have anyone else to bounce ideas off of. How are you doing this? How do you write that? And the people at Creighton, you know, were set in doing the pre-med AMCAP stuff. So they had never even been on the CAFSA website and, like, plunked around on there. So I used a lot of online resources. I would honestly, like, the PALife.com, that website helped me a lot. Um, I just Googled, like, how to write this, how to do that, how to format your personal statement. And um once I kind of got started, the faculty were able to, you know, look at the application with me, help me out. But the first month, like that first month of April into May, I was like, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know what Castle looks like. So that was hard, just like the naive part of it. And what's been exciting is um, because I did um, was the president of the PA club at Creighton, I actually just like put together a little video for them, just walking them through, you know, a cast application, how I filled out mine, what mine looks like. And um, a few students have just been email- emailing me, like, what does it even look like? So I thought it would be a cool way to, you know, just kind of share, um, you know, how the experience can, I guess, go smoother. But that was the hardest part, just starting it, for sure. Yeah, no, it's, it's a process. The people who think they're going to, do it all in one day and get it submitted. No, crazy. Yes, I was like, no, yeah. that's probably not how this is going to go. But yeah. good luck. <laughs> yeah. And the stress of rolling admissions, like just not, you know, feeling like you're submitting on time enough. So I called all of my schools and made sure, like, are you rolling? Are you not? Um, when should my application be in by? When do you start extending interviews? Just so I had a little bit of a profile window for each school that, wasn't really online, I guess, so that I knew, you know, difficulty-wise, what needs to be done first, what can be done last, stuff like that. Okay, cool. 
Um, so you chose Marquette and you're happy, it seems like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so at Marquette, I mean, what what part of schooling are you in, first of all? So I am in my second semester of my first year, and Marquette is unique in that our program is 31 months long. So um, last semester was just like anatomy, more basic sciences, and then this semester we started our diagnostics class, our h and class, um, you know, our lab class. So we have a lot more um, didactic, like hard PA classes, but this summer semester is when we start like our clinical medicine clinical decision making and like the hard they say the hard stuff (laughs) so um I'm a little bit I guess delayed in that in that the first year normally like they start you in the summer and you start off running and ours is more of a gradual transition which I appreciated um but yeah so first year of didactic I guess but a little funkier because we're a three-year program okay so be that you're a couple semesters in, what kind of tips would you give to someone who's about to start PA school? So I was really thrown off by the fact that it wasn't really school that the hard part. It's more so like making friends, finding where you need to study, deciding, you know, how much money you can spend, just like the adult things that come with starting a new chapter of life. So coming from college where I lived with 10 girls um, and moving into an apartment, you know, alone, it's a lot different in adjusting that way. So I dealt with like the first few months of school, just be feeling kind of alone, kind of alienated, not really knowing where to start. Um, And now like I have a great group of friends. Um, We like to do stuff for fun on the weekends and then can study together. But that was definitely the hardest part of it was just, you know, making friends, starting over again, which sounds weird, but that's like a part I didn't think about. I didn't think about it at all. So my advice would just be, you know, reach out to your classmates, find them on Facebook. Like, don't be afraid to be, you know, awkward. Hey, you want to grab coffee? Stuff like that. So just stay outgoing, I guess. Yeah. How big is your class? It's 55 and the class accepted for next year is 80. So they're slowly growing it. Um, Oh, yeah, so like my, I have a solid group of about five or six girls, which is pretty great. Okay, and you would be big. Mine was 44, um, and you're mm-hmm. right. I remember we had a little get-together the night before classes started, and it was so awkward because <laughs> it's like it's everybody terrifying. knows each other. Nobody, like, everyone's nervous. We're all in the same boat, but, you know, it's fun. We got to know each other, but I remember I was sitting on – we were at someone's pool at their apartment or something, and I was just sitting on the ground, and a girl was sitting next to me, and she was like, do you want to walk to class together tomorrow? And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that was yeah. it. And then we sat by each other, and we're really great friends still, and then we kind of picked up two others, and I'd say the four of us are were really close and um, still so important. Everything. Yeah, so it's just I mean, the friendships come, and it's just you look back and see how they were made, and it's kind of funny. Once you're like, yeah, totally. (laughs) But, um, has any part of PA school been surprising to you? Um, I think just, I mean, there's a lot of different personalities in my class, obviously a lot of different ages. We have a few parents, a lot of people are married or engaged. And then, um, Marquette has like an internal program. So they accept like a certain amount of students from undergrad into the PA class. Um, So there's people of all ages. So what's surprising to me is we're all here sharing the dream and like goal of being a PA, but we all have, you know, different experiences. So, you know, one of the dads in my class was telling me about how he worked in, um, you know, South Africa delivering babies in tents for six months. And I'm like, I thought my clinical experience was very enlightening and whatever. So it's cool to see people come from all different areas. And he moved from Alaska. He moved his family and his newborn baby girl from Alaska to attend PA school here. And I just think that's so cool and so surprising how people literally come from all over the place. But we all are, you know, we wouldn't have met each other if we, if we didn't share this same goal. So I think that's pretty cool. But definitely surprising. Definitely surprising. Yeah, that is cool. Um, so you got a little ways to go in your program, but what are you thinking about for kind of after PA school? So I 
love um, kind of the atmosphere of emergency room or an OR, just the fast pace, like decision making stuff. Um, I'm also really into like procedures, so I love dermatology and all that stuff. Um, but I have no idea, and I heard you know stay open about it and be just very positive about it but I you know the best part about why I chose being a PA is because I get to switch so I'm not going to be heartbroken if I find out I love ortho but I have a really great job offered in you know plastic so I think it'll be cool to kind of see where I end up um, but I can do anything so that's the best part that's awesome well, tell everyone where they can find you and follow along with your blog and social media stuff. Yeah, so I have um, a blog called The PA Prescription, and I run it with another client from Creighton. And what's different about us is that I obviously did not take a gap year, and then she is applying this cycle in May. So we like to share a lot of, you know, our ideas on how we did things differently, how we got, uh, you know, patient care hours differently, how we did the PRE differently, stuff like that. So you can find that on Squarespace. And then our Instagram is um, at the PA prescription. And then the blog, you know, can be found on there. But we like to just share, you know, lots of different tips and stuff that's kind of um, not really talked about on the internet. Like I said, I have a whole post about, you know, just making friends and like starting over in PA school. And so there's helpful stuff on there for applications and kind of wherever you're at. But then there's also some, you know, real life posts about, you know, being lonely, living alone the first few months. So stuff like that. But yeah, I would appreciate if anyone has questions or wants to reach out to me about anything. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this again. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> But yeah, I'm sure everyone will love it and you'll probably get plenty of questions, I'm sure. But Yes, I hope so. That's that's <laughs> that's the hope. <laughs>